speaking on behalf of the province today are Dr. Jennifer Russell, the province's Chief Medical Officer of Health, the Honorable Dorothy Shepherd, Minister of Health, and batting cleanup is the Honorable Blaine Higgs, Premier of New Brunswick. Bonjour tout le monde et bienvenue à cette mise à jour sur le COVID-19 au Nouveau-Brunswick. Les porte-parole aujourd'hui sont la médecine hygiéniste en chef, le Dr. Jennifer Russell, l'honorable Dorothy Shepard, ministre de la Santé, et l'honorable Blaine Higgs, premier ministre de Nouveau-Brunswick. Dr. Russell. Thank you, Bruce. Merci, Bruce. Bonjour à toutes et à tous. Good afternoon, everyone. Today, I will be reporting on the Parkland St. John outbreak, an update on our COVID-19 vaccination program, the outbreak in Zone 4, which is the Edmonston Grand Falls region, the sporting tournaments, and the importance of everyone keeping their steady 20 personal contacts. Aujourd'hui, je discuterai des points suivants. L'éclosion au complexe Parkland St. John, une mise à jour sur notre programme d'immunisation contre le COVID-19, l'éclosion dans la zone 4, soit la région d'Edmonston et de Grand Sceau, les événements sportifs et l'importance de limiter les contacts étroits à sa liste de les mêmes 20. So, I can advise you today that another round of testing is occurring for employees and residents of Sims Court today. And to date, the case count remains at 20 confirmed cases at Parkland St. John, eight employees, one non shanex employee, and 11 residents. A total of 1,871 individuals received their first dose of Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine at New Brunswick's first COVID-19 vaccination clinic which was held in the Miramichi Hospital over the weekend. Um, this was obviously a very historic event, and I was very pleased to be able to do a site visit that morning and say hello to all the um, staff, the people directing traffic, the people who were immunizing, doing the screening. Uh, it was amazing. So a two-day clinic, um, they, they were following the individuals from priority groups received uh, the vaccination. So nine First Nations health centers, 365 adult resident facility and long-term care facility staff, 352 local Shanex residents and staff, 237 Vitalité staff, 512 Horizon staff, and 396 prompt uh, um, extramural ambulance New Brunswick and social development staff. And the remaining vaccines will be administrated to frontline healthcare workers and workers in long-term care facilities in Miramichi. Um, and public health staff will be contacting employees through the Horizon Health Network and also through the facilities in the area. Again, quite a momentous occasion and obviously um, a drop in the bucket in terms of how many more people need to be immunized and, and hopefully we'll be able to say that we've gotten where we need to be by September in 2021. Um, but we do have a long way to go. And, uh, but it is very heartening and inspiring to be where we are right now. I do want to highlight the fact that we saw healthcare professionals from Horizon Health Network, Vitalite Health Network, the extramural program, Ambulance New Brunswick, Public Health New Brunswick come together as one team, working together side by side. And I just want to thank everyone for a job well done. And obviously, New Brunswick as a province has been doing amazing work as a team. So I'm very, very proud of, of everything that people have been doing to get us to where we are right now. Je tiens à souligner que les professionnels du secteur des soins de santé du réseau de santé Horizon, du réseau de santé Vitalité, du programme extramural de l'ambulance Nouveau-Brunswick, de santé publique Nouveau-Brunswick, travaillent en équipe et ont fait preuve d'une collaboration exemplaire. Je vous remercie pour tout votre excellent travail et aussi le travail de toutes les néo euh, comme équipe, comme collaboration durant la pandémie. The lessons learned from the Miramichi experience will be applied in a few days in the Moncton in the Moncton area as we prepare for immunization clinic in Zone One and all future clinics. Um, and again, it really was a well laid out, uh, well run um, operation this past weekend. And again, I, I can't say enough to thank the staff, uh, all the the partnerships uh, and the work that went into that. 
Hier, le personnel de première ligne et les médecins qui sont directement en contact avec les patients dans les services d'urgence, les unités de soins intensifs, les unités COVID-19, les centres de dépistage de la COVID-19 et les laboratoires, ainsi que tous les vaccinateurs ont été invités à se faire vacciner aux cliniques d'immunisation contre la COVID-19 qui se dérouleront le 23 au 27 décembre. Compte tenu le faible taux de croissance des nouveaux cas dans la zone 4, de l'importance de la santé mentale et de bien-être, ce temps de l'année pour bon nombre de gens, de l'absence de nouvelles infections parmi les travailleurs de la santé et de l'évaluation des dé déterminants sociaux de la santé, Santé publique a recommandé au cabinet de permettre la zone 4 de revenir à la phase jaune du plan de rétablissement à compter de minuit ce soir. Je tiens à féliciter les membres du personnel de l'Hôpital régional d'Edmundston et du Réseau de santé et vitalité pour tous les efforts déployés vu de traiter les patients ayant contracté le COVID-19 et de contrôler l'éclosion. C'est vraiment difficile quand vous êtes stressé euh, en même temps qu'il y a une éclosion de, de, faire, euh, de, de donner soin à des gens qui ont, ont besoin de la soin. Alors, euh, encore, je, je félicite tous les gens qui sont impliqués dans l'éclosion euh, euh, dans l'hôpital et euh, dans les, la zone 4. So, taking into consideration the slow growth of new cases in zone 4, Considering the mental health and well-being of New Brunswickers at this time of year, the lack of new infections of healthcare workers and balancing the social determinants of health, public health uh, is recommending to Cabinet to move Zone 4 to the yellow level of recovery effective as of midnight tonight. And so that decision was made uh, earlier today. I can advise you that testing of staff and members of certain units in the hospital continue regularly. And I also want to thank everyone in Zone 4 for taking the rules seriously and doing your part to move your zone out of the orange level just in time for the holidays. Um, but the caveat is that obviously we are expecting new cases possibly in that zone um, because there are still some people self-isolating and we are aware of that. So we are cautiously optimistic that, that we can get through the holidays um, without seeing a spike in cases, but that will depend on everyone's cooperation and everyone following the public health directions. There are two new confirmed cases of COVID-19 in New Brunswick today. The two cases are in Zone 1 in the Moncton region, and they are as follows. One individual 20 to, age 20 to 29, and this is a contact of a previously confirmed case of COVID-19. And one individual uh, age 60 to 69, and this is a travel-related case, and both of the individuals are self-isolating. We are seeing an increasing number of travel-related cases. Obviously, during the holiday season, people are traveling more, um, but it is a very dangerous time to be traveling with the case numbers going up all around the country, all around the globe, and also in the U.S. There are currently 46 active cases of COVID-19 in the province, with two individuals hospitalized, including one who is now in intensive care. And I do ask that you keep uh, these people and their families in your thoughts and prayers at this time. Aujourd'hui, j'annonce qu'il y a deux nouveaux cas confirmés de COVID-19 au Nouveau-Brunswick. Les deux cas dans la zone 1, la région de Moncton, sont les suivants. Une personne âgée de 20 à 29 ans qui a eu des contacts avec un cas confirmé de COVID-19, une personne âgée de 60 à 69 ans, soit un cas lié à un voyage. Toutes les personnes sont en auto-isolement. Il y a présentement 46 cas actifs de COVID-19 dans la province. En tout, deux personnes sont hospitalisées, dont une aux soins intensifs. Et j'aimerais que vous gardiez ces gens dans vos, vos pensées à ce moment-ci. En raison des risques liés au fait qu'un grand nombre de personnes se rassemblent à un tournoi sportif et compte tenu des rassemblements sociaux qui sont habituellement associés à ce genre d'événements, Santé publique annonce qu'il est interdit de tenir des tournois sportifs avant la mi-janvier au moins. Les parties ordinaires, comme une équipe de hockey qui joue contre une autre, sont permises, mais il est interdit de tenir des tournois, des bandspiel ou des événements majeurs pour le moment. Le risque est tout simplement trop élevé. Encore, on a des, des gens euh, tout alentour de, du pays, dans les autres provinces, qui sont en train d'essayer de gérer des problèmes très, très, très sévères avec le COVID-19 maintenant. Alors, c'est pour ça que nous nous excusons pour les inconvénients que cette décision peut, peut causer les personnes qui organisent de telles activités, mais nous devons assurer la sécurité de tous les gens du New Brunswick. 
Due to the risks associated with large numbers of individuals gathering at sporting tournaments and the typical social gatherings that follow these types of events, Public Health is advising that sporting tournaments will not be permitted until at least mid-January. Regular plays such as one-on-one -on -one hockey games are allowed, but no tournaments. Bond spiels or major events can take place at this time. The risk is just too high and you know we see the number of cases across our country and the places that are being overwhelmed right now. We really can't take any chances and we do apologize for the inconvenience to individuals who may be organizing such an event, but we really need to keep all New Brunswickers safe. It remains very important to keep your number of close contacts low. I cannot emphasize this enough, especially during the holiday period. I can tell you that myself and all the other medical officers of health in the province are very concerned. We don't want to see a spike in cases in early January as a result of gatherings that ha are happening now. So please keep your number of close contacts consistent and very, very low. Il demeure très important de limiter ces contacts étroits, surtout pendant les fêtes. Stick with your steady 20, that is the people that live in your household up to a maximum of 20, but make sure that's the same consistent people that you were interacting with while not wearing a mask. Limiting your contacts will reduce the spread of infection so that we can avoid a surge of new cases in January. We still have a long way to go. En limitant nos contacts, il sera possible de réduire la propagation des infections et ainsi d'éviter une augmentation subite de nouveaux cas en janvier. Nous avons encore beaucoup de chemin à parcourir et je sais qu'on a beaucoup d'inquiétudes maintenant. Moi et aussi les autres médecins hygiénistes ici aux, aux provinces, on est toutes vraiment inquiètes qu'il y aura euh, euh, des éclosions dans le mois de janvier et euh, des nombres de cas. Alors la seule manière qu'on peut réduire les risques, c'est de faire certaine qu'on n'a pas beaucoup de contacts étroits. Alors c'est vraiment à vous d'essayer de, de, de prendre soin de, de chacun d'entre vous. So please look after each other. Even if you can't be together, you can reach out. Please be kind and check in virtually over the phone on your, with your neighbors, friends, family members who may be alone and self-isolating. And again, my wish for all New Brunswickers is that we have a safe and joyful holiday season and going into the new year having a safe January moving forward as we wait to get everybody immunized. Je souhaite que tous les citoyens du New Brunswick passent de rues fêtes en toute sécurité. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, bonjour. Today, I'm pleased to accept Public Health's recommendation to move Zone 4, the Edmonston region, to the yellow level of recovery, effective as of midnight tonight. I want to thank everyone in this region for taking the rules seriously and doing your part to move your zone out of the orange level just in time for Christmas. Over the weekend, we began administering the Pfizer Biotech vaccine in Miramichi. 1,871 New Brunswickers were vaccinated during the two-day clinic, and the remaining doses will be given to frontline healthcare workers and long-term care workers this week. An additional 3,900 doses arrived in the province this morning. Half will be used as the second dose for the first group who received the vaccine, and an additional 975 people will be vaccinated at clinics taking place in Moncton between December 23rd and 27th. We also anticipate that once it is approved by Health Canada, the Moderna vaccine will soon be available in New Brunswick. While vaccine shipments will continue to trickle in during January and February, we expect things to pick up soon in 2021. In the coming weeks, as we ramp up our vaccinations, information will be placed on our online dashboard to keep New Brunswickers informed about how many people have been vaccinated. I know some healthcare workers have expressed concerns about being able to get time off so they can travel to receive the vaccine. I want to assure you that we have received, as we receive shipments from different companies such as Moderno, 
We will have more flexibility regarding storage. This will allow us to administer the vaccine in communities across New Brunswick. Please do not worry if you are not able to travel to receive the vaccine right now. Everyone must continue to be patient. This is going to be a slow process due to the limited number of vaccine doses we will be receiving initially. We will continue to work through our priority groups and we will bring the vaccine to your region as quickly as possible. For now, New Brunswickers who fall into the priority categories are being contacted directly by public health. But all New Brunswickers will have the opportunity to be immunized once the vaccine supply is available in large enough quantities. This will take time and we will need to continue to follow public health measures to prevent the spread of COVID-19. We will need to continue to wear our masks, wash our hands, practice social distancing, and self-isolate if required. I'm thrilled that our entire province is in the yellow level just in time for the holidays, which means we can celebrate with our loved ones in small gatherings. But if we want to stay at yellow, we need to keep our number of contacts low this holiday season. By sticking with our steady 20, we can help keep the virus contained and this will help make contact tracing easier in the event of an outbreak. We are so lucky in New Brunswick to be able to have these small holiday gatherings. In so many other parts of Canada and around the world, getting together is just not an option this year. Many people have been forced to cancel plans and must avoid contact with anyone outside their immediate household. While we still have restrictions in place and rules that we must follow here in New Brunswick, we have a lot to be grateful for. Zone 4 has shown once again that our province is able to bounce back quickly from COVID-19 outbreaks. We have demonstrated our ability to move out of orange many times since we first came out of the red level in the spring. Of course, we all want to avoid moving to a more restrictive level if we can. I am confident that if we continue to follow the guidelines of public health and the rules in the mandatory order, we can keep New Brunswick yellow. 2020 has been a year unlike any other. It has not been easy, but New Brunswickers have stepped up. We have demonstrated our resiliency, our hardworking nature, and our kindness more than ever this year. We have come this far through the pandemic by working together. Let's continue to do our part and take care of each other this holiday season. Let's work to keep our province yellow as we enter 2021. And I want to echo Dr. Russell's words in saying, let's have a safe, happy, healthy Christmas season. I want to wish all New Brunswickers a Merry Christmas and a very happy new year. Thank you, merci. Bonjour, good afternoon. Right now, we are in a critical period. Nous sommes à la crosse de chemin. We have done so well for so long, and following the success of our first vaccine clinic in Miramichi this weekend, we can indeed see the light at the end of the tunnel. Now more than ever, however, I'm calling on New Brunswickers to take our situation very seriously. Aujourd'hui, plus que jamais, je demande à tous les New Brunswickois de prendre cette situation au sérieux. With Christmas almost here, we all have to make sacrifices to keep New Brunswick yellow and protect ourselves and our loved ones. We have seen how quickly COVID-19 cases can surge and get out of hand when people do not take the proper precautions. Right now, in the UK, a new strain of virus has been identified, and we have seen it spreading quickly in that country. 
We've seen a lockdown of the air travel to Canada for the last several days, and we're not sure how much longer that'll, that'll be necessary. Closer to home, we can see many examples of outbreaks that have gotten out of control in provinces like Quebec, and in Ontario, and in Alberta. In Quebec right now, more, there are currently more than 18,000 active cases. And my commendation goes to the continued great work of our border officers controlling the movement back and forth between our provinces so that we know that people are coming here and following the rules when they arrive, if it's indeed necessary for them to come. What we see happening in Ontario right now, the province will be going back into a full lockdown right after Christmas. I have a daughter that lives in Ontario, and this year, my daughter and the th her husband and the three grandchildren will certainly not be coming for Christmas dinner. We, they won't be sitting across the table from us. We will be Zooming, however, and staying connected. Cases are continued to rise in many other jurisdictions, both here in Canada and around the world. So we are indeed a little island under ourselves. And we are certainly proud of the island that we've become. But we must continue to do our part. We cannot be complacent over this holiday Christmas period. We must enjoy the season, but we must find new ways to do that. We must make sure that everything we do is in consideration of what impact can my actions have on someone else. What impact can my actions have on someone who I love, someone that, who I always protected all my life, but I got a little complacent at this time of the year. We cannot allow that to happen. We need to keep the contacts low, keep contacts low during the Christmas period. We need to continue to follow the advice of public health. And above all, we, meet, we need to remain vigilant. Now, I know that many people think, well, the vaccines have started. Let's put that in perspective. In New Brunswick alone, we will need for two doses for every citizen, 1.5 million vaccines. To date, we have 6,000. And we don't have a timeline of when the others will be delivering. We're hopeful, we're optimistic, and yes, we're so close. But close is not the answer. When we reach the finish line and we've reached the level of vaccinations necessary, that's when it's time to celebrate. But for now, we must continue the good work that we've had to date. We must continue to follow the rules. Mais pour l'instant, continuez votre bon travail et suivez les règles. This is a time and this is a season when we all are thankful for so many things. We're thankful for family and we're thankful for friends. And we're thankful for a time to reflect on just how important family and friends are to each of us. This year, we need to be especially thankful that we're living in New Brunswick. And we need to be especially thankful that we've been working with such tremendous people who have gone above and beyond in every corner of this province to make us unique, to make us special, to make us successful. I am convinced if we get through the next few weeks, and we will know obviously the outcome of the next few weeks by the mid-January, if this virus is controlled through this time period and we stay focused on the task at hand, we will be able to roll out the vaccines, the vaccinations faster than anyone else. We will have a province that will get back to green quicker than anyone else. And green is when the rules comes on. That green is when, the, when we get to a point that we no longer have an emergency order. And that is obviously what we're trying to achieve. So I'll be thankful for the time I'll spend with my, my family members that are here. I'll be thankful for the ability to talk to my other daughters across the country. As I said, one in Ontario, one in, in Saskatchewan and their families. I'll be thankful for my mother and her 100th birthday, but we will be thankful in small numbers. So I'm just asking each New Brunswicker, think about what you're thankful for and think about what it would be like if we lost control in these next few weeks and what January might look like if we did so. 
Think about what it'll look like if we can turn our province fully vaccinated back to normal faster than any other province in the country. Think about the trends we've had so far. Think about the role you've played in that. And let's together continue the winning formula, looking after each other and making sure that New Brunswick leads the way in health and safety of our citizens. Thank you very much. Merci et joyeux Noël et bonne année. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur Premier Ministre, Minister Shepard and Dr. Russell. Thank you, Premier Minister Shepard and Dr. Russell. Nous allons maintenant procéder aux questions des journalistes. Vous avez toujours le droit de poser vos questions dans la langue de votre choix. Chaque journaliste aura une question et un suivi. Voulez-vous assurer de désactiver le son de vos micros? We'll now proceed with questions from members of the media. Each reporter will have one question and a follow-up today. You have the right to pose your question in language of your choice, and please ensure your microphones are placed on mute. Silas Brown, Global TV. Thanks, Curtis. Uh, this is for uh, whoever wants to, uh, to take a stab at answering it. Uh, I, I'm curious uh, under under what criteria uh, the Moncton uh, Zone Zone One was chosen for the uh, for the next vaccine clinic. Um, thank you for the question. Um, really, it was, um, you know, Horizon um, took the first, the first load of, uh, of vaccines, and so now we, we are operationalizing it under Vitalite. They are um, um, also <laughs> the uh, availability of the freezer. So there is, there is a freezer at the, at the uh, George L. Dumont Hospital, and so that also played a role in this. When we get into other vaccines that are not going to need the uh, temperatures that, that uh, this, the Pfizer one does, um, we'll have a lot more flexibility about where it's going. So we, we wanted to operationalize this in both networks and ensure that it's going to be a flawless um, uh, administration. Um, I can't say enough about how well it went in Miramichi. And so um, that's, that's really the reasoning behind that. Mr. Brown, follow up? Yes, uh, Minister, um, I, 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 you mentioned that uh, uh, healthcare workers around the province shouldn't be uh, stressing about getting time off uh, in order to get to these vaccine clinics. Uh, so I'm curious if the, this Moncton vaccine clinic um, is, is that going to be a similar mix to the Mayor Machine one, where we're going to see some healthcare workers traveling in and then other people from the community? Or is this going to be a change in tact where it's going to be, uh, for the most part, um, uh, healthcare workers and uh, other people uh, in vulnerable uh, populations from the Moncton area? So for the 975 doses that are going to be applied, it's going to be all healthcare workers. Um, again, it's going to be from the priority groups that we have, and public health will be reaching out to those groups for uh, accepting appointments. And, um, and again, we're going to roll it out as, as responsibly as we can, ensuring that proper shifts are covered, um, and that kind of, th those kind of uh, considerations have to be taken. But this one will be all healthcare workers. Sorry, just a quick clarification. Is that healthcare workers just from the Moncton area, or are we going to see people traveling from around the province? Just, just want to make sure that's clear. So we will be leaving it up to public health to make those appointments. I would assume that because of the location, we will be um, um, dispersing this throughout healthcare workers in the Moncton area. But again, in being responsible with covering shifts, ensuring that we have the workforce that we need and utilizing the resources we have, we need to vaccinate everyone. So um, if we don't have the numbers to fulfill that 975, we'll certainly be, be looking at, um, at taking as many appointments, uh, as many people as we can from wherever they can come from. 
Thank you. Thank you, Vicki Hogar, CHCO. Thank you, Bruce. My question is for Dr. Russell. Dr. Russell, for the Russickers who tested positive for COVID-19, particularly at the beginning of the pandemic, are you still monitoring those individuals for long-term health issues from COVID-19? And if so, what have you discovered? Uh, there has been talk at the national level to try to uh, capture that information across the country, uh, but my understanding is there's no real formalized way that that's happening at this point, but it's certainly on the table uh, that we've been discussing at the federal level. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Ms. Hogarth. Do you have I too, it's for either Dr. Russell or Minister Shepard. When there are more vaccines available in New Brunswick, will New Brunswickers be able to choose which vaccine they receive if they have a preference for a specific manufacturer? Uh, just going back to your other question about capturing the data on long-term sequelae, um, Minister Shepard mentioned that there actually is a, a project in St. John to look into that kind of uh, information. And coming back to the choice, uh, the prioritized groups, uh, as the rollout happens with the different vaccines, they probably, I mean, if a person wants to wait for the next vaccine that's available, they are welcome to, uh, but certainly it will be offered in the in, in order of the priority groups. So, Obviously, if you're not in a priority group, you're not going to get offered the earlier vaccines, but certainly by the end of the, the seven that we are expecting to be rolled out and, and the ones that are further down the list uh, in terms of the timelines of when those will be rolled out, they will be in much larger quantities. Um, but again, I'm, I'm not, I, I can't speak to the idea, to, to the effect of whether or not people will be able to uh, choose which one other than, you know, when you're invited to come, if you want to wait for the next round, then you're welcome to do that. Thank you, Ms. Hogan. Thank you, Dr. Alexandre Boudreau, L'Acadie Nouvelle. Oui, bonjour. Ma question est pour la Dr. Russell. Uh, comme uh, le Premier ministre l'a mentionné tantôt, le Royaume-Uni a uh, détecté une mutation de la COVID-19 qui est potentiellement plus contagieuse. Est-ce que vous avez la capacité de tester pour cette uh, mutation du virus sur nos Brunswick? Alors, à ce moment-ci, on. on, on, on... Nous avons de l'information que ça existe une autre sorte. Au Canada, toutes les, um, les recherches qui ont déjà été faites pour, pour voir s'il y a um, des cas ici qui sont liés au même, uh, même type, on ne l'a pas vu encore. Alors, les, les appels que j'ai eus avec mes collègues, les, les autres médias et juste en chef du Canada et aussi uh, avec les gens... Um, Les gens qui font les recherches euh, au laboratoire euh, national à Winnipeg et aussi, je crois qu'il y a un laboratoire à, à Colombie-Britannique euh, qui ont des recherches là-dessus. Puis, on sait que on devrait à, garder euh, les, les résultats qui, sont, qui viennent de d'autres pays. Euh, et alors, la seule chose qu'on peut dire maintenant, maintenant, c'est que ça existe. Euh, uh, les différents types et uh, le gouvernement du Canada va surveiller attentivement uh, la, le variant génétique uh, du virus à l'origine de la COVID-19 qui a été détecté au Royaume-Uni et collabora, il faut collabora, collabora, oh, mon collaborer uh, avec ses partenaires uh, étrangers dans l'Organisation mondiale de la santé pour mieux comprendre ce variant et ses répercussions. Alors, euh, il faut s'attendre de, de voir l'apparition d'un variant gén génétique dans le virus euh, et on va observer ça, on va juger par les données préliminaires euh, euh, qu'est-ce qu'on peut observer. Alors, euh, à ce moment-ci, c'est vraiment euh, quelque chose qu'on va surveiller euh, avec euh, l'Agence de santé publique du Canada. Merci, Dr. M. Boudreau. As-tu suivi cet après-midi? Oui, c'est toujours pour la Dr. Russell. Euh, je voulais savoir, vous avez déjà parlé de ça euh, un peu il y a une couple de semaines, mais je voulais savoir, est-ce que vous songez à donner une, une identification, une, une sorte de une forme d'identification aux personnes qui vont se faire vacciner? Puis est-ce que cette pièce d'identification pourrait éventuellement euh, devenir nécessaire pour entrer dans certains lieux publics ou euh, pour voyager, par exemple? Euh, au, au département de santé publique, euh Qu'est-ce qu'il a et, et les, les protocoles, c'est que les gens vont être donner quelque chose en, en papier pour rapporter avec eux. Qu'est-ce qui ça sert puis qu'est-ce que ça va donner au niveau de les, les choses qui vont 
pouvoir faire avec. Je ne sais pas exactement parce que nous, notre responsabilité, c'est de donner l'information sur euh, le, le vaccin qu'il reçoit. Et on va avoir cette information aussi dans notre système euh, euh, en ligne euh, euh, pour avoir tous les documents euh, de tous les gens qui ont été vaccinés dans un système électronique. Merci, M. Boudreau. Laura Lyle, CTV. Hi, thanks, Bruce. Uh, this question would be probably best for Minister Shepard. Um, Minister Shepard, what is going to be happening with testing over the holidays? Will, will there be any changes to testing capacity or processing or uh, the availability of appointments? So my understanding that with the exception of, uh, I think, Christmas Day and perhaps another day, Chris, there's, there's, there's going to be a change in the hours, I understand, but there will still be availability. So Vitalite and Horizon will still be offering testing at all of their sites, uh, but I think during Christmas Day, uh, they're just going to have shorter hours. So the testing is absolutely still taking place and still available. Uh, again, just shorter hours on Christmas Day. Well, do you have a follow-up? I do. Uh, I'm wondering if you can tell me how many healthcare workers are currently uh, self-isolating in the Edmonton region. Uh, I can tell you how many are coming out of self-isolation in the next <laughs> day or so. I think it's around 36 are going to be released from isolation on the 25th. 39. 39. I was close. 39. But they're going to be released from isolation, my understanding, is the 25th. 26. Thank you, Ms. Lyle. Marie Sutherland, CBC. Uh, good afternoon. My question is for uh, Premier Higgs. Um, does the fact that a New Brunswick worker at a main paper mill has COVID-19 uh, is giving you any increased concerns about people who are crossing the border for work and whether the rules are strict enough? Is there any revisiting of that? Um, so with respect to um, any cases uh, related to outbreaks uh, in other jurisdictions, our uh, information is transferred from our public health uh, uh, teams to, with whatever jurisdiction they're um, interacting with or liaising with. So all I can do is speak to the idea that we will continue to see travel-related cases. We will continue to do the, main, the same kind of um, contact tracing for each and every situation. Um, and if there are elevated risks that we need to communicate within communities, that will be done at a, at a community basis, at a community level. Ms. Sutherland, do you have a follow-up? Yes, uh, I think this is also for Dr. Russell. Um, it's a question about rapid testing and, and whether this will be coming to New Brunswick soon. I'm just thinking if it takes, you know, a couple of days, four or five days to get uh, a test and then three to four days for results and there's, there's no rapid testing like there is in other provinces, how can that give an accurate result? Well, first of all, we don't have that kind of turnaround time. We actually, within the time frame of somebody calling 811 or filling in the online assessment form to the time they get a t get test, like get the sample taken, and from that time they get uh, the test done and the turnaround time is probably within 24 to 48 hours. So we don't have long wait times for people who are getting tested. Most people, uh, if they have two symptoms, are supposed to be self-isolating while they get tested so they aren't uh, putting others at risk. Uh, rapid testing, uh, there's different types of rapid testing. And some of the different types that are out there have different profiles in terms of whether or not they pick up all the different types of, uh, uh, if they pick up COVID-19 uh, very sensitively. Uh, so there are false positives, there are false negatives, depending on who you test. So if you're talking about travelers who are asymptomatic, the gold standard really is the PCR test that's done in the lab at Georges Dumont. And uh, so, but there are other rapid tests that we use in certain situations like outbreak settings, like in long-term care facilities. Again, when we have to cohort people immediately, isolate people immediately. So those are the rapid tests that are done with Gene Expert, which is also a PCR-based test, but it is more rapid. We just don't have as many of those in, in terms of the abundance of that resource and, and the materials. So we do use those quite judiciously. Um, there is 
isn't a current backlog in any of the testing that we're doing. So again, the gold standard is the regular test that's done by PCR, and the turnaround time is really not more than 48 hours um, unless there's a surge, and that has happened. And then the actual um, priority does go to the people that we would be most worried about. So the people that uh, have had their tests ordered by public health because of their, their relationship to an outbreak or being a close contact to a case, et cetera. So as of right now, um, the difference between the different types of rapid tests out there, we do have some available. Uh, there are limitations to some of them and they have to be used in certain settings uh, with respect to um, uh, asymptomatic versus symptomatic and, and, and uh, we, right now we, we do have plans to look at other um, types of testing in terms of rapid testing and what context they can be used in, but right now we're, we're quite happy with how things are going with uh, the, 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 the two m main tests that we're using. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Ms. Sutherland. Andrew Watt, Telegraph Journal. All right, Minister Shepard, um, just kind of want to follow up on Silas's question. Um, why is it that the next clinic is the one in Moncton is only going to be for healthcare workers? My understanding is the one in Miramichi also had you know, nursing home residents, etc. So I'm just trying to understand, is this a policy shift and have you prioritized healthcare workers over everybody else now? Um, thank you for the question. No, this isn't a policy shift. This is a numbers uh, management issue. Um, and so we, we think the most, you know, right now, I'm not gonna even speak for public health or the professionals, but it, it, if, if I were to, to um, consider what the, what the options could be. We have 975 tests, and what's the most efficient way to get them out in, in, a, in a short timeline and under the circumstances that we have? So no, this isn't a policy shift. Everyone needs to be vaccinated at some point, and so we're, we're coming into, uh, you know, we're coming into Christmas time, we're coming into holidays, and we're looking at the most efficient ways to, uh, to, to get people vaccinated. Thank you, Mr. Waugh. Thank you, Mr. Shepard. Mr. Waugh, do you have a follow-up? I sure do. Um, Mr. Shepard, I'd like to uh, have you talk about the program that, um, you know, you, you apparently were aware of, but the doctor wasn't, about following up on the long-term effects of COVID-19 on patients and what that has revealed. And I'd also like to know if the province has a program to track any side effects from people who have received the vaccine? So um, I know about this because I was actually speaking with a researcher from St. John. So I honestly don't know the details um, and I don't know uh, at what, 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 um, what step it's in and what the, how many people they're following. Um, I'll be happy to get that information for you. Um, but the, the, the issue is, is that, you know, we're nine months down the road with COVID and uh, we're not going to know long-term effects for a little while. And so obviously it's going to be something that's going to have to, uh, to carry on as, as information comes in. I don't know that they have any results at this point, but again, I'd be very happy to, uh, to reach out and uh, we'll get you more information on that. Thank you, Mr. Waugh. Thank you. Minister Wildenet Paul, Radio Canada. Hold on. Question about the, um, the side Mark. effects of the vaccine. Mr. Wall, are you still online? Go ahead and ask him. Okay, so around um, capturing the information around side effects of the vaccine, uh, as with any vaccine prior to the pandemic, there is a there is a process by which that data is captured, and it is actually published on uh, either the Health Canada or the Public Health Agency of Canada website uh, with respect to all vaccines. So because this is a, a pandemic and we have seven vaccines that are hopefully going to be rolling out over the next nine months, um, we do uh, have a system in place to track that information and share that nationally, uh, again, to keep track of uh, the most of, of all the different types of reactions and, and side effects. And there they in all the different seven of the seven vaccines, they all have different profiles in terms of efficacy and also different side effect profiles. And, and, and uh, so that, that all that information is, is going to be available. Thank you, Dr. Wildenet Paul, Radio Canada. Merci beaucoup, Bruce. Uh, la question est pour Dr. Rousseau. J'aimerais juste clarifier une petite information. Du 23 au 27 décembre, il y a une clinique de vaccination. Peut-être que vous pouvez-vous nous expliquer, ça sera où exactement? 
Et pour qui est-ce que ce sont toutes ces personnes de partout à travers la province? Alors, euh, le personnel de première ligne sont ceux qui vont être vaccinés, ceux qui sont directement en contact avec des patients dans les services d'urgence, les unités de soins intensifs, les unités de COVID-19, les centres de dépistage de la COVID-19 et les laboratoires, ainsi que tous les vaccinateurs qui ont été invités euh, de faire vacciner aux cliniques d'immunisation. Euh, C'est à l'hôpital à Moncton… Euh, le jour du Mans, l'hôpital jour du Mans à, à, à Moncton. Merci, docteur. Mademoiselle Paul, as-tu suivi cet après-midi? Oui, s'il vous plaît, merci beaucoup. Euh, J'aimerais que vous expliquiez pourquoi cet hôpital-ci, pourquoi la région de Moncton, je sais qu'ils ont la parlé en anglais, mais en français, nous donner cette explication. Pourquoi cette région spécifique a été choisie? Et peut-être aussi nous mentionner. Euh, Est-ce que d'autres employés d'ailleurs de la province pourront se faire vacciner à cet hôpital? Alors, pour euh, la raison que c'est Moncton, il y a une couple de raisons. Une, ils ont le congélateur spécialisé euh, aux propres températures pour garder les vaccins. Et aussi parce que la première déroulement, c'était à Miramichi. Et euh, alors, ça, c'était avec Horizon. Mais Horizon travaillait à, à, prochement avec les partenaires parce qu'ils savaient que ça, ça, ça allait dérouler dans d'autres endroits aussi. Alors, euh, il y avait des, des, euh, des gens qui faisaient les, vac les, les vaccinations euh, qui venaient de tout alentour du province. Alors, euh, pour le deuxième euh, déroulement, ça va être à Moncton, ça va être encore avec euh, Vitalité. Mais les, les gens d'Horizon sont aussi impliqués euh, à cause de l'effet que fur et à mesure qu'on a d'autres, euh, euh, le transport de d'autres doses de ces, ces vaccins-là, ça va arriver à, à d'autres endroits aussi. Mais à ce moment-ci, c'est Moncton parce que ça, c'est l'endroit où euh, ils ont le congélateur et aussi parce qu'ils voulaient op op opérationnaliser euh, le, le déroulement avec euh, vitali Vitalité. Merci, Docteur. Merci, Mademoiselle Paul. Eloïse Rodriguez, Radio-Canada. Oui, bonjour. La question est pour Docteur Rousseau. C'est par rapport au rassemblement du temps des fêtes, le rassemblement de 20 personnes. Eh, C'est plus que n'importe où ailleurs dans les autres provinces atlantiques. C'est plutôt des groupes de 10. Je me demandais comment vous êtes arrivé à cette recommandation et est-ce que vous êtes inquiet de voir le nombre de cas augmenter exponentiellement après le temps des fêtes? Alors, pour répondre à la deuxième question, au premier, c'est oui, je suis très inquiète qu'on va voir des éclosions puis des cas. Mais j'aimerais que tous les gens, comme le premier ministre a dit, on, on aimerait que tous les gens soient très, très, très vigilantes. Euh, même qu'on dit que les, les gens peuvent rassembler euh, avec leur proche euh, d'un nombre maximum de 20, ça veut dire les mêmes 20. Alors, pas une groupe, une soirée, une autre groupe, de, une autre soirée. Euh, alors, il faut que ce soit les mêmes 20 euh, tout au long tour des fêtes. Oui, je sais qu'il y a d'autres endroits où que les rassemblements sont même euh, moins que ça. Euh, alors, euh, c'est très important qu'on on essaye de vraiment être en, en sécurité. Et, euh, et vraiment, s'il y a des gens qui se sentent mal, ils ne devraient pas participer à des rassemblements. Si vous avez voyagé, il faut que vous, vous, vous faites votre auto-isolement. Euh, ça, c'est vraiment important aussi. Euh, alors, euh, c'est vraiment... Euh, on veut que les gens se rassemblent seulement avec leurs leur très proches. Et, et même que c'est le maximum 20, ça ne veut pas dire que vous devrez euh, choisir 20 personnes. Ça, ça inclut votre, les gens qui demeurent dans votre maison aussi. Merci, Louise. As-tu un suivi? Euh, oui, pour la prochaine euh, campagne de vaccination, j'ai combien que c'est à Moncton. Je me demandais combien de personnes vous vivez avec cette campagne, mais aussi par la suite en janvier, euh, combien de doses vous pensez recevoir et quand? Alors, le total, ça serait euh, 1950, mais ça va être divisé en deux. Alors, la première euh, vaccin va être donnée, il y aura 975 personnes. Euh, et la prochaine euh, euh, distribution de, du vaccin va être euh, trois semaines de, de ce date et ce sera l'autre 975. Merci, Louise. Adil Ibrahim, CDC. 
Thank you. This question is for Dr. Russell. Um, late last week, we learned that uh, Canada's allocation of the Pfizer vaccine doses uh, may be able to actually inoculate 20% more people than expected. Uh, does this mean that more people will be vaccinated in New Brunswick in this first vaccine clinic and in the coming clinics as well? Um, all I know is that the distribution of the vaccine is on a per capita basis and uh, the way that the vaccines are set to roll out, uh, we will only have small uh, numbers of doses in the first uh, three months of the rolling out of, of uh, how we're vaccinating people and really by, you know, we're only going to be able to vaccinate in total about 60,000 people uh, in those first priority groups as the two first vaccines are rolled out. So very, very small doses, uh, numbers of doses. Um, and, and if there are changes in how uh, we receive the, the vaccines in terms of the numbers of the shipments, et cetera, we will accelerate our priority group of vaccinations. Thank you, Dr. Ms. Ibrahim. Do you have a follow-up? Yes, uh, also for Dr. Russell, is the province doing anything specific or in particular to prepare for a possible surge in cases after the holiday season? So if we lose control, as the Premier said? We're praying. No, I'm joking. We, we, we are very concerned um, and we're hopeful that again, if, if we do everything right now, then that won't happen. But obviously we have dealt with outbreaks across this province, uh, Zone 5, Zone 4, Zone 3, Zone 2, Zone 1. Uh, so we are prepared in the sense that, you know, we have everything in place that has been in place for all of the other outbreaks. Um, you know, we will still employ the same processes uh, at the provincial level that we have with all of our partners that have been working so closely together since the beginning of the pandemic. And with each outbreak, we learn more and more. So all the learnings from the last nine months are, are really collated quite well in our in, in our approach. So again, all we can do is, I, I, I am serious, hope and pray that over the course of the holiday season that everybody does what they need to do to stay safe and keep New Brunswickers safe and keep your community from having to go into an orange phase of recovery uh, of response uh, after the holiday season. So, and, and again, um, there was an, a letter that was sent out by Minister Carty for um, all of education and early childhood development around uh, encouraging people to wear masks uh, for those first two weeks when they come back after school. Anything that we can do to reduce the risk, that's what we want to do. That's why we are saying non-essential travel is not recommended and very much discouraged because the risks are so high of bringing COVID with you when you travel to this province or when you leave the province and come back. Uh, and the risks of gatherings, increasing the risk, also a problem in, when we're not in a pandemic. These are normal things. These are normal behaviors. These are very, very healthy normal behaviors when there's not a pandemic. But during a pandemic, it is very, very risky and increases uh, our, our chances of, of being overwhelmed uh, in the new year. And we don't want to see that happening. So, so the only way to minimize all of those risks is one, to decrease your number of close contacts and, and not have anybody doing any uh, non-essential travel and self-isolating properly if you are. That concludes today's COVID-19 update for New Brunswick. Just to recap, there were two new cases today. They were both in the Moncton region, that zone one. One was travel related and the other was a close contact of a previous case. There are now 46 active cases in the province. That's two down from yesterday. Yesterday we had 48. Um, and again, for anyone in zone four, that's the Edmonton region, you're rolling back to the yellow phase of the recovery along with the rest of the province. So for the holidays, it looks like all of New Brunswick will be in the yellow phase of recovery. That's all the news I have for you right now. I'm Vicki Hogarth from the CHCO News Desk. I'll see you next time. A news and public affairs production of CHCO-TV, New Brunswick's only source for independent community television.